Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast today, the Friday edition. I hope you've had a great week. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Ruth, chapter 3. We will complete that chapter here in our verse-by-verse study through the book of Ruth. And if you have been with us for very much of this, I hope it's been a blessing to you. If this happens to be your very first time to be listening in to this broadcast, thanks for joining us. We do a couple of things here. Number one, obviously, we study the Word of God and right now we're in the book of Ruth, but also we try to encourage one another to be gospel tellers. And to that end, I've got a gospel tract here that I want to encourage you to get from us. It's just one of the 40 tracts in a sample packet I'd like to send to you, but I'll say more about the track in a moment. Let me lead into our Bible study time this way. Now, all this week, as I said, we've been in the book of Ruth and chapter 3, and this chapter displays some really key actions by three main characters in the book. In the first paragraph, we saw the counsel of Naomi. In the middle paragraph, we saw the character of Ruth. And today, in the final paragraph of chapter 3, we're going to see the confidence in Boaz. The confidence in Boaz. Now, when I say confidence in Boaz, that really could be understood two ways. Either Boaz had internal confidence in himself or other people had confidence in him. Now, what we're going to see today is how others had confidence in this man, Boaz. He was a man you could depend on. And my real goal today is to get too quickly about Boaz, but so that we can talk about how he is a picture of Christ and how that we can have confidence in Christ, we can trust in him. Please have pen and paper ready today to jot down some key New Testament references that help us to see how Boaz is a type of the real kinsman redeemer, and that is Jesus Christ. I mentioned a gospel tract here a moment ago. Now listen, just in case you are unfamiliar, a gospel tract is an evangelism tool. It's a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation, not man's plan, not a church's plan, but God's plan. And you can find it in the word of God. Read the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. God's plan of salvation is in the person of God's only begotten son, Jesus Christ, through his sacrifice at Calvary, where he shed his blood, that we through him can be saved. This particular gospel tract in my hand right now is a favorite of so many people. The title of it is this, The Gift, The Gift. And it emphasizes this fact that salvation, God's plan of salvation, it's a gift from God. We are saved not by our works, not by our religiosity, not by our moral upstanding, not by our keeping the Ten Commandments. For you and I to be saved from our sin guiltiness, We must receive the gift of salvation because there's no way for us to merit it on our own. And the fact of salvation being a gift is the bold central theme of this gospel track called The Gift. Now, if you're going to be ready, please, and please do be ready, have pen and paper ready. At the end of this broadcast, my announcer will give our phone number. He'll give our email address, our web address. He'll give those three methods. Jot down the way that works best for you. Would you do that? Give us, please, using the phone or whatever method, give us your name and mailing address. We'll send you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks. There's 40 tracks in that sample packet. This one, the gift, you're going to love it. You're going to use it 
please get it from us today. If you can't stay to the end of the program, just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. You can order the sample packet there. If your Bible is open to the book of Ruth in chapter 3, let me just highlight some verses from the final paragraph. First of all, verses 14 and 15 say this, And she, that's Ruth, lay at his, Boaz's feet until the morning, and she rose up before one could know another. And he said, Let it not be known that a woman came to the floor. Also he said, Bring the veil that thou hast upon thee, and hold it. And when she held it, he measured six measures of barley, and laid it on her, and she went into the city. Now, verse 18, the last verse of the chapter. Then said she, this is now Naomi talking to Ruth, Naomi the mother-in-law. Then said she, Naomi, sit still, my daughter, until thou know how the matter will fall. For the man, this Boaz, will not be in rest until he have finished the thing this day. Now, the plan that was set in motion in the opening five verses of chapter three have now been played out. Naomi, the wise, godly mother-in-law, has recognized the hand of God at work on behalf of she and Ruth. Boaz, the godly man, he has shown his romantic interest in Ruth, and now a plan is made known for here for Ruth to accept his offer. That's the middle section of this chapter. Ruth goes to Boaz in secret there in verses 6 to 13. He responds by telling Ruth that he's going to do, he will do the role of not just marrying her, but also buying her and being her kinsman redeemer. My outline title for verses 14 to 18 is the word confidence, as I said. Three facts about Boaz are seen here that give strong reasons for Ruth and Naomi to have confidence in this man's words and his actions. First of all, Boaz's moral character gave them confidence based upon verse 14. Scripture here is so very clear that there was nothing shady, nothing unbecoming that went on between Ruth and Boaz at this night meeting here. The second thing was Boaz's measured care. In verse 15, Boaz there measures out six measures of grain. He specifically says to Ruth that she is not to return to Naomi empty-handed. This grain really acted as a down payment, as an earnest money payment that he would do the role of a kinsman redeemer. And the third quality here for Boaz is his willingness, his, well, is, let me use my M word here, Boaz's meaning to complete, his meaning to complete the task. This all comes from verses 16, 17, and 18. When Ruth comes home and tells Naomi all that has transpired, plus Naomi sees this down payment of grain, Naomi knows that Boaz, he will absolutely complete his commitment, and he will do it that very day. Through our time in the book of Ruth, I have said on a few occasions that Boaz is a picture of Jesus. Boaz will do the job of a kinsman redeemer for Ruth. And I explained the job of what it meant to be a kinsman redeemer earlier this week. You can go to our website and listen to all those broadcasts there. But right now, let me point out four specific things about Boaz that allows him to be Ruth's redeemer. And then I want to give you New Testament references that help us to see how that Jesus is our kinsman redeemer. Boaz is just a type. Jesus is the real redeemer. Number one, Boaz had to be a blood relative to Ruth's family for him to be the redeemer. He had to be part of the family, a blood family tie. Well, this point is what I emphasized already this week. I used the verses out of Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 to 17. I read them on air, jot it down, read them again. Hebrews 2, 14 to 17. When we read them, we told there that Jesus took on flesh. He didn't take on the the 
form of an angel. He took on flesh, human flesh, to be part of the human family so that he could redeem human sinners from our condemnation. Second thing about Boaz is that Boaz had to have the means, had to have the wherewithal to be the redeemer. But as a wealthy man, Boaz had the ability to buy Ruth's property and to set her free. Well, Jesus, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9, though he was rich, Jesus was rich, yet he became poor to redeem us. In 1 Peter 1.18, here's a verse, if you've never memorized it, you need to. In 1 Peter 1.18, we read that we are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold, but with the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The third fact about Boaz is this, that Boaz was not forced into being the Redeemer. No man in that day could be forced to play the role of a kinsman redeemer. He had to want to do it. Jot down these references. They come from John chapter 10. In John 10 verse 15, we're told that Jesus laid down his life. Jesus laid down his life. Well, you see, I know that. Well, stay in John chapter 10, read past verse 15, get to verses 17 and 18. There we're told that no, Jesus said, no man takes my life from me. It's not forced away. I lay it down of myself. He willingly, lovingly paid our sin debt. Romans 5, 8, but God commended his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus came to be our Savior, our Redeemer, out of a loving, willing heart. The fourth fact about Boaz is this. Boaz had to be willing to marry Ruth, this non-Jewish Moabite woman, this woman with a stigma on her because she was a Moabitess. He had to be willing to marry her. We're going to see more about this whole issue when we get over into chapter 4. But when Boaz would redeem Ruth, yes, he would receive land and he would be controller of the family's land, but he had to take Ruth to be his wife. He wanted her, though. We've already seen he wanted her. He made the overtures to say, I'm interested in you. I want you. Well, if we turn to Ephesians chapter 5, in the second half of that chapter, there we're going to find instructions that are given to husbands and wives. The model for the husband in a family relationship is Jesus, and the model for wives is the church. Husbands are told to love their wives as Christ loved the church. Christ wanted us. We were in our sin Stained, willful, rebel condition on our own stinking selves. But he wanted us while we were yet in our sin guiltiness. Jesus said, I will clean them. I will make them fit to be my bride. I will do the work. I will provide the wedding garments. I will pay the entire wedding bill. Why? I love them. I love them. Oh, dear friend, God loves you. God loves you to the point he sent his only begotten son, the eternal God took on flesh and died in your place that you through his sin payment can be redeemed out of your sin debt. Receive him as your savior now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website, our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.